Welcome back to 556 Media. We're back in the shop, back on the workbench, and this time we're doing a viewer requested video about police batons, their evolution, their designs, and their purpose. Let's get into it. So a quick shout out to Ron Gross who suggested this. I will put a screenshot of his request here. So the police baton and this one that I have here is actually a wooden riot baton dates back prior to police. These were originally designed and used in the early ages as a bludgeoning instrument, a bludgeoning weapon, so meant to hit people with. When it came to police use, the term nightstick or baton uh, derived from the original police or constables on patrol or night watchmen that used to carry them in this manner, uh, although they were generally 24 inches in length, they always used to have a uh, leather thong attached to them. You can see there's a cutout here, although this one is missing on this particular uh, riot baton. And they were used for multi-purposes, so not just as a bludgeoning or an impact uh, weapon, but also as a means of defending against strikes, also for breaking glass, things like that. And it's still used for that purpose to this day. So the police baton, as I said, uses an impact device, so used for stunning, uh, protecting against violent offenders, uh, gaining compliance from violent offenders, things like that. So you would have your police baton and a wooden baton or nightstick, and that's where they came from. And a lot of agencies still carry these to this day, uh, not just this riot type, but also a standard wood stick and another one that I'll get into later in this video. Now unfortunately I do not have an old or current uh, wooden baton to show you in this video, just this older uh, riot baton that's made of wood. But I do have a polycarbon example here, and I'm actually covering up part of it right now because I'm gonna get into this specific baton later in the video. But as I said, generally they're 24 inches, unlike the 36 inch uh, riot baton, and they would be considered a straight stick, a night stick, uh, just your average baton. And as you can see the difference in length, uh, they were fairly easy to, to carry uh, on the belt or in, the officer or constable or night watchman's hands, particularly with the uh, thong, the leather thong attached. And I'll throw in a picture of me carrying uh, an older, I think it's a polycarbonate one in the photo, but just to give you an example of what a old traditional nightstick looked like. Let's check that out. All right, so as you saw in that photo, that was back when I was 19 years old, the first time I was sworn in, and that was a nightstick, straight stick uh, baton, and it was made out of polycarbonate materials such as this. It was not the wooden one, which is the one that I was first issued. So let's get into the different types, how it evolved, and what they're used for. All right, so as I said before, the original uh, wooden batons were designed as a bludgeoning type of uh, instrument. Later, uh, technology, terminology changed. It would be an impact weapon or a defensive implement for law enforcement, uh, military police, whatever. You would have this on your side, carried on your belt, swinging on your hip, 
and it would usually be held on your belt the opposite side of your firearm. You could draw it out very similar to say a sword or a saber and wield it and use it to impact a violent offender, gain compliance via physical strikes in non-deadly areas. And we'll get into the use of force continuum as well when it applies to these batons. All right, so this bad boy is a Monadnock PR24 model STS. And this is a rigid side handled baton. But after the wood batons, uh, you had your polycarbonate, aluminum, steel, and they still make them using those materials to this day. This is, as I said, the Monadnock PR24 side handled, rigid side handled baton. And this thing has always been my favorite. Uh, I carried a PR24 for many years. They had several different variants, uh, some that did not have this uh, tumble stop or hand stop, some that just kind of went out to this uh, rigid handle. You had them in aluminum, you had them in this polycarbonate material such as this. Uh, you had them in folding, or not folding, uh, takedown models where the tip of the baton would kind of slide in and lock and you just kind of flick your wrist and the rest of the baton would come out. And it was just a more compact version, but there are still many agencies that use and carry this to this day, mostly out west in the United States, but this was one of my favorites. I'll see if I can come up with a camera angle on how to use this thing, but this was this was my favorite out of all the batons I've ever been issued and carried. So the PR24, uh, particularly uh, by Monadnock, and there's all kinds of knockoffs of it, uh, was designed to be a multi-purpose multi uh, police baton or protective instrument or blunt impact instrument. Uh, it was used for impacts, uh, breaking glass, uh, jabbing, uh, and in this case, it was designed for takedowns. So you could use an arm hold, depending on how you held it and produced it. You could wrap it, and it's hard to do with one hand, but you could wrap it uh, around your offender's arm and gain a compliance hold on them uh, using basically like an arm bar restraint and a come along type of maneuver. So always been my favorite, always been my favorite. I miss them. Still carried by a lot of agencies out west in the United States, but uh, this is still my favorite and they still make them and they're not cheap anymore. Okay, up next we have a more modern baton. It's a collapsible slash extendable baton and these are made by ASP and I believe ASP stands for Armament Systems and Procedures. So someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. But they make uh, an array of these collapsible extendable batons. You can see they come in different lengths. Um, how they work is you have different sections and when they're carried on an officer's duty belt, they're very compact. They're always with you. They're not swinging on your side and knocking into things. You just pull it out and you flick your wrist to extend it. Let's see if I can give you an example of that. All right, real quick without trying to take out my workbench. So you take your ass baton out of your belt and you flick it and it extends and locks into place. Now you have a steel baton used for striking uh, defensive blocks, things like that, breaking glass, uh, whatever you need to do with it. Uh, it is a useful tool. It's a useful tool. I've used it on uh, violent offenders a couple times didn't have too much of an effect that could have been a user uh, issue however I've used these more times to break out car windows to apprehend a suspect or save somebody that was in a car accident burning vehicle things like that so that's how they work Now, one of the drawbacks to an ASP, or an extendable uh, retractable baton, is that once it's friction locked open, you have to close it. Uh, usually, the best method is to strike it on a hard surface, like.
like that. And that kind of sucks. Um, that's, I think, a disadvantage to this design. Um, but it still functions. It's still a, it's still a modern law enforcement duty baton to this day. Now, there's been a couple other more modern uh, police batons that have been used, uh, manufactured and used um, over the course of my 30-year career. And one of them's the Handler 12. Never became really popular. I only know one other officer that I work with that was ever trained in it and used it. I'll throw a picture up here. All right, other impact weapons or defensive instruments that a police officer could use as a baton would be your standard flashlight. Now, specifically mentioned was the mag light. This is a mag light. This is not a mag light mag charger. This is your standard, uh, this, is, this one actually has an LED bulb in it, but your standard uh, 3D cell battery flashlight mag light flashlight and we will be trained to grasp it by the light end and use it in a striking manner for compliance and defensive purposes such as this and when the batteries are in them they're 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 pretty heavy and they can be effective uh, let's get into some I guess legal and policy problems with using a mag light as a striking instrument as a baton so as with any tool that a law enforcement officer carries they have to be trained and certified with its use and the flashlight is no different believe it or not especially the mag light so if you're trained to use the mag light as a impact weapon or protective instrument you have to be trained in that and believe it or not up until I retired in 2019, they still trained and issued these things and trained to use them as an impact in instrument if needed. And it kind of became a last resort, and let me explain why. You see this mag light, I've disassembled it. I've taken the light end off, I've taken the tail cap off. And one clever attorney at one time said, in court, his client had been struck by a police officer by a mag light and the attorney came up with this very clever uh, theatrical thing where he disassembled the flashlight such as this he held it up in court and said an officer does this kind of look like a uh, pipe to you now and the officer's like yeah i guess kind of you know hollow it's metal um you know it's round kind of looks like a metal pipe right and the officer's like, yeah, I guess. And the attorney continued and said, so you struck my client with a pipe. It all went downhill from there. A lot of agencies uh, went away from using and training the officers to use flashlights as a, uh, as a, a blunt impact or uh, you know, defensive tool. And it only is usually used by most agencies as a last resort. For example, if that's all the officer can get to on their utility belt or all they have in hand to use to defend themselves, then they can use the mag light. That's my personal history on it. So real quick, one last uh, instrument, protective instrument, uh, impact instrument that we're going to talk about in this short video is nunchucks. Yeah, I know, martial arts. Well, guess what? Uh, Broward County Sheriff's Office in uh, Florida used to allow officers to be trained and carried in, uh, in the use of nunchucks in lieu of your standard baton. So these are not the exact same ones. If you go back to 1989 and look up Season 1, Episode 1 of Cops, Broward County Sheriff's Office, I forget his last name, but Jerry was his first name. Uh, I'll roll in the clip after this. He actually used them in that episode of Cops. So, yes, nunchucks were actually uh, carried by some agencies back in the day. 
I am fairly confident that would not fly now. Anyway, I hope this short video uh, gave you some insight onto the history and evolution and purpose of the police baton or impact instruments, protective devices. This is what I have. That's the information I have to share with you based upon my experience. Any questions, comments, or concerns, address them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. We'll see you on the next one.